Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Fundamentals Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com Welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast. Uh, my name is John Bolton and I've got with me today Michelle Greaves. Hello Michelle. Hello. Hi. Um, we're going to be talking to you today about project roles for the, for the Project Fundamentals qualification aligned to Box 7. So if you're studying Box 6 or if you're doing the Project Management qualification or something else, you're more than welcome to listen to this, but this is intended for people that are doing the Project Fundamentals qualification or PFQ aligned to Box 7, so from 2020 onwards. And we're going to be talking about project roles. So we need to, or I'm going to ask Michelle to actually, describe to you some of the roles that go on in a project. And that's going to include the roles of the sponsor, project manager, and so on. So um, I was just going to ask Michelle, really, I mean, Mm. can you just talk us through how, what this model looks like? If you've got any sort of study guide in front of you, you can see the diagram, but can you just talk to our (laughs) listeners virtually through the medium of a podcast, what this diagram looks like? Kind of like the say what you see, if you remember. Say what you see. Catchphrase, isn't it? Say what you see. Um, So um, we've got a lot of key roles within projects. And um, if we focus on the the sort of um, of starting at the top and working our way down, um, we're going to have some kind of senior role that's going to steer the direction of the project. So that's going to be some kind of steering group or board. Sitting within then they're going to have someone that's um, sitting a little bit more closely to the project, um, often called a sponsor. So the sponsor is that person that's ultimately accountable. Um, and then they're going to delegate work down to the project manager who's going to actually kind of do the work. Um, underneath the project manager, they can have a team to support them. And they might also have um, individuals in what's called a project management office to provide some support to the project manager, to the team, um, and also often to the sponsor. Um, you also get um, in much more your um, iterative life cycles um, a role called product owner. So they can sit within the, within the team or they might sit alongside the project manager Um, And the project manager is also going to need to engage with some form of users. So the person that's actually going to use the product at the end. So that's kind of the the sort of big picture about our different roles. And they're going to have different roles and responsibilities throughout the life cycle. Mm. So just remind me, how many sponsors does a project have? Um, Sponsors are going to have one one sponsor per project. project. And how many project managers does a project have? Um, Ideally, one as yeah, well. That's right. Otherwise, you end up with everyone pointing their fingers in opposite directions. Too many cooks. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but you might have many team members. Correct. And you might have you might have many product owners if you've got loads of products because mm-hmm. one person can. And you might have loads of users. Yeah. So basically, you've got this kind of dual governing mind of the sponsor and the project manager working in collaboration with each other. Absolutely. And outside that sort of close knit community, you've got this whole raft of other people getting involved. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so good. So um, one of the things that, um, so looking down this list, it talks about project governance. Can we just Mm. deal with that first? Yeah. Because I think that's confusing a lot of people and us included to start with. Yeah, what's all that about? So um, you mentioned steering group. Mm. Do you think that's involved? Yeah, so I would say governance is all about the the rules that we apply within organisations itself. Um, But this becomes more important in projects um, because we need to make sure that everybody's working in the same way. If there's any money that's going to be involved, that that's being accounted for and signed off. So um, you either have... um, oversight for a a project from an executive or a board but quite often you'll have a project steering group so a group of senior members within the organization and they're going to say this is these are the rules the things that you need to follow for this project if you want to get sign off for money this is where it needs to go and they're going to provide advice on that project as well Um, That steering group will also um, often appoint the sponsor and the sponsor might actually sit within that steering group or project board as well. Okay. So if I was, so what sorts of level in the business, remind me, would be the the project board? They're kind of senior managers, directors? Yeah, director level. Okay. Heads of departments quite often. Yeah, so sort of movers and shakers really. Mm. 
Okay, but the governance bit is all about the rules that they're following, isn't it? To make sure that the the project manager doesn't go go you know rambling off on their own with the fairies. That's right. Um, that's, and the sponsor's got a key role. Yeah. So let's, can we talk about the sponsor then next? Because mm. that seems to be the next one in the hierarchy, in the pecking order. Yeah, and they they are kind of in that sort of hand in hand role, connecting together the the organisation and the organisation strategy against the project manager that's um, actually delivering to time, quality, cost, and quite. Um, quite focused so the sponsor is trying to balance between what are we trying to achieve what's the vision um but making sure that the project manager's got all of the resources the time equipment that they need to deliver so the sponsor is the person that's going to be ultimately accountable for that project so if that project is a success or failure it's probably going to sit on on the sponsor they want to drive it forward and they want to see that it, it achieves mm -hmm. um they might have um, accountability for budgets, so the um, steering group could assign down allocating budgets to the sponsor, and they're going to own the business case, um, so you'll hear that term come up in some of the other podcasts. They're focused on the, um, the benefits of what the project is trying to deliver, so they're that ultimate champion behind why we're delivering that project. So and, and the, so the next one down is the project manager, aren't they? So mm. is, is the sponsor, so what's the relationship between the sponsor and the project manager looking like? So I'd say your sponsor tends to be a much more kind of senior role okay. and the sponsor's then providing support and advice down to the project manager, but also kind of um, steering and guiding them to make sure that the project is still following the original objectives. Is it still in line to deliver the right benefits and the benefits that the sponsor had foreseen? Okay, so the project man, so the the sponsors also you mentioned about benefits, didn't you? About the mm. project sponsors responsible for benefits, so they've got quite a key role in that, as I understand it. You know, mm. they're kind of making sure that the the project's there for a reason. It's going to deliver all these things that we're expecting, and so on and so forth. But the project manager is more interested in delivery of the stuff. Yes, is that right? Yeah. So how would you how would you elaborate on that role from the project management perspective? Mm. So the project manager. Um, they might not be brought in at the um, the first stages of the project. They might be brought in a little bit later on. Once we've got an outline business case, the project manager comes in um, to actually deliver the work. So um, the sponsor wants to be able to um, cross a river. And the project manager's job is to plan out and design and build the bridge that's going to cross that river. So they're very focused on the delivery of the bridge, whereas the sponsor's focused on, are people going to use the bridge and let's get across it and what's it there for? Okay. So project manager's job is to drill down into the detail of the project. What do we need? What resources do we need? What's um, the budgets? What's the time scale? So all of that planning that comes into our PMP will be done by the project manager. So that's a big part of their, their role. And the other part of their role is about making sure that that's actually executed. So um, they've planned out when the tasks need to be done. They then need to monitor, control and report that. And if there are any problems along the way, they can escalate up to the sponsor. They can get some advice. They can escalate issues up to the sponsor and any change requests as well. Good. Good. So really... The project manager's like the sort of legs of the swan mm. wobbling away underneath the waterline. The sponsors, the little swan, serenely drifting across the lake. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm not sure sponsors would agree with that. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The project manager's de delivering the stuff to the time, cost, quality, aren't they? And mm. uh, making sure the teams manage properly and the suppliers. And that sort well, of they're, thing. they're delivering the stuff in the sense of they make sure that everything is delivered, but the people actually doing the groundwork underneath the project manager is going to be your project team. So they're going to be the people actually kind of feet on the ground, doing the development, doing the delivery. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about the users then, because I think the, the APM seem to use this term user and end user fairly interchangeably. Mm. Um, what, what, what's their role in the, in, the, um, in the miasma of all this? So if we think about a user, a user is going to use the end product that's being produced. So the, the main thing that the user is going to input into the project is what they want. Okay. So they're going to define out the requirements of what that product needs to do. And that's, that's a really key point for the, for the users. You can get that distinguishment between a user and an end user. 
So the end user will be someone that's, that's actually using the product, whereas our users are defining out what it needs to do. Okay. So the users then sort of define what they want, accept it and operate it. And so, so if, who would a user of a, I don't know, a new railway line be? Mm, so the user of railway line would be someone like the train operating companies, the freight operating companies. They say what the components of the railway line actually need to do, what kind of pressures that it needs to sustain. Whereas your end users is much more like your passengers. Mm. And we're not going to ask them about what's the detailed requirements for the tracks. Mm. And where it needs to go and how mm. it needs to run. Mm. But someone must 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 tell them that. How do, how does the end user voice get heard? So on certain projects, I think it, it is valid to involve the end user, and that's where you get a much broader kind of consultation, um, where you can ask out for input into that that area. Um, but sometimes those end users don't even exist. Yeah. So if you think of um, quite a, quite a lot of projects, so HS two. The passengers for that line don't don't exist yet, so we can't almost ask their views mm. until it's in operation. Mm. Okay, so we've got this kind of forming this view now. The, mm. the 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 users say what they want. The project manager's there to deliver what they want. The sponsors there to pay the money and make sure the benefits are delivered. There's a the governance structure. We've got some other roles. So so mm. the project managers not on their own, are they? I mean, they must have a. What they've got this concept of a project team. I yep. guess that's all the umpa lumpers, is it? All the people that are. Yep beavering away as it's christmas i suppose we can talk about that can't we anyway <laughs> Sant- santa's elves santa's little elves yeah and i say oh yeah i'm sure we've just disenfranchised <laughs> alienated a vast proportion of the project community by just saying that but anyway yeah, yeah they're, they're the people that get on with the stuff aren't they that, that, um, mm. and they work for the project manager on a regular basis i mean they've got some particular things to do like deliver the products and yep. be good citizens and all that sort of thing make sure they fill in their time sheets support the project manager and, and basically um help solve issues and risks and stuff raise when things are going wrong yeah. and i think it's good to recognize as well that project team may be made up of lots of different um specialists so lots of different people from lots of different areas as well mm-hmm yeah, okay. Um, so they don't necessarily always work together. So you've got a group of people that um, perhaps don't know each other, don't get on, and the project manager's got to bring them together to then work on delivering that product. Mm, mm, cool. I'm, I'm intrigued by this idea of a product owner. Mm. Um, I think th- this, is, um, this is a role that has a couple of interpretations and manifestations. And yep. I think the one that the APM are quite eager to kind of develop is this idea of the product owner in an iterative life cycle or an agile relationship and the diagram in the study guide certainly talks about that but can you elaborate on on that for us? Mm. So product owner definitely comes in much more in your iterative and hybrid life cycles so there is another podcast on on the life cycles themselves Um, but the product owner is is kind of an interface between the end users or the users and the project team So quite often the product owner will actually be someone that's um, quite specialist, quite experienced in the area that the project is being delivered on. So if you're developing a new website, they might be someone that's on the ground and um, working with the current website. And they can then kind of talk and, and translate between what the users want and what the team needs to deliver. So they really um, they help uh, with prioritising a lot of the work um, throughout the project. So um, they might do things like come to project team meetings, workshops um, to provide that support and advice, um, give some um, translation, some support to the project manager about what, what do the users actually mean here, um, and then help with that prioritisation as well. Mm. So I, I was understood product owners would be the people that own the product that you're delivering. Yeah. And so I think you might find people referred to like that in a normal, say normal, I mean, mm. and it's a, a, a linear life cycle as well. Mm. So, but it's, there is a particular usage of that term in, mm. in agile environments, software development particularly. It's, it's a lot about giving ownership to somebody of, of that particular mm. product and mm. saying, okay, what they say almost goes. Mm. Okay. And then last but not least, and I don't mean that in any disparaging way, it's a project management no. office, because I think 
having having run projects before and having had a project management office uh, or office, it's been incredibly valuable. Yeah. And um, so it's, if you've got one, it's a real godsend. Lot yeah, of the time. you never know what you got till it's gone. Yeah. So mm. it's um, you know, there's an element of administrative support, but I think it's a bit more than that. And mm. you know, there's certainly one of the things that can be done by project management office. They talk about embedded office, project management offices and, mm. you know, high, and these other different roles. If you do the PMQ, you'll do this in a bit more detail, I think. Yeah, so you can have different types where they support one project or they support multiple projects. But in essence, what they're doing is, is a supporting role. So mm -hmm. you're absolutely right, John, that administrative tasks, so filing, setting up meetings, doing minutes, doing timesheets, uh, recording the budget, sending out reports, to all of that kind of activity that frees up the project manager and the project team to focus on delivery. Mm -hmm. um, but in addition to that, they can also then provide a bit more technical support. So um, they could do detailed analysis on um, the information that's coming in. Um, they could look at um, some of the uh, different tools and techniques or templates that are being used. Um, make sure that everyone's um, skilled and trained on those particular softwares. Make sure we've got the best type of software that, that we need for that particular job. Mm -hmm. Mm. And they can also, because they sit slightly, um, when you see the, the diagram in the book, you can see they're slightly kind of to the side, so a little bit disconnected from the project. So that allows them to be a little bit impartial. Um, and they can do a lot of assurance and auditing throughout the project. So they could um, do our, um, quality audits or configuration audits, check that we're following through all of our processes and support us with some of those reviews as well. Mm, so they, mm. they tend to take different shapes and forms in every organisation, um, but they can um, they can be really 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 valuable, really helpful. Mm, okay, cool, mm. good. Well, that's that's quite helpful. I mean, describing a picture in words is hard. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot more to this than mm. you know we can ever hope to achieve in 15 minutes or so. But I think we've done a good, pretty good job of talking about sponsors, project managers, governance, mm -hmm. team members, end users, product owners, and the project management office. So I'm going to call it a halt there. So yeah. thank you very much. Thank you. And all you listeners out there, hope that's helped and uh, good luck with your studies. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To find out about our training courses, e-learning or tutor-led course, please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com.